Hello and welcome to the 89th video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine in C. So I explained in the last video that we've started a new sort of little mini section uh, where we'll be implementing an opening book using the Polyglot opening book. Last video I showed you this uh, website here, the WEC tournament website, where there was, there was some information to the uh, Polyglot and what it's all about, written by the Fruit author, Fabian Latuzzi. Um, you can download a version that doesn't use cgwin.dll um, if you go to Fonz's site, which is this one here, and inside here is Polyglot 1.4 W29 from January 2012. You can download this one and have a good meander through the code at your own leisure and your own time to have a look at what it's all about. Remember, Polyglot is a UCI and Winboard adapter, but has bookmaking and uh, functionality inside it. Now, you might, luckily we don't actually need to trawl through the code to find out how the book is structured, how moves are structured and keys generated, etc. Because somebody has already done that for us. Um, the sort of lead developer these days on Winboard, a guy, H.G. Muller, who's made a lot uh, of improvements and advancements on Winboard. One of the biggest probably is the automatic inclusion of UCI engines because it automatically invokes Polyglot as an adapter. Winboard also uses Polyglot for G as uh, GUI books now as well. And Mr. Muller has written on his web page here a description of the Polyglot book format to make it easy for other people then to implement. So I'll start talking uh, talking very quickly through the relevant parts for this video of the Polyglot opening book. So each entry inside the book is in an entry of 16 bytes, as is written here. And this should now be fairly self-explanatory what the things are after we spent so much time programming a chess engine. But we have the hash key for the position. We have the move in the book to be played in that position. And then a wait, which, will decide, which decides how good that move was from the database that was supplied when the book was made and a learning value. And what's really interesting to us is the move and the key and maybe the wait. We'll see what we do later on. And immediately this should strike you as extremely similar to, say, a hash entry in our hash table when Vice is playing. We store the key and the move, as well as some scores and things like that. Now, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but the key is generated for a position in Polyglot, obviously using different um, random 64-bit unsigned integers than what we use inside Vice. So what we're going to need to be able to do is actually generate the same hash key that Polyglot then generates for a position to be able then to probe the entries inside the Polyglot book. And once we've done that, we'll then need to construct a move in also in the Polyglot format, because you remember we have a specific move format inside Vice where we store the various flags and things. Well, so does Polyglot, but does it in a different way. So what we're going to need to write is a set of functions that allow us to interchange between our key and a polyglot key and our move type and a polyglot move. So in this video, we'll take a quick look at the keys. So the keys are all hard coded into polyglot and Mr. Muller has listed all these keys inside uh, his website here and they're all index and they're, uh, sorry they're all contained inside one array you remember in vice we split them into arrays for the castling keys for the side to move and for the piece on a square well here they're simply all put in one array one after the other and it's explained a little bit further down exactly where they're stored so where the pieces are the castle are the ampersand and the turn and also here importantly is how you get the index for a type of piece on a particular square using 64 times kind of piece which is an integer plus 8 times the row times the file where the file and row or rank are 0 to 7 base like in vice and the piece kind of piece is done like so so it's put together a very similar way to how vice is actually just with the numbering slightly different then castling is similar to vice, en passant, turn, etc, etc. And finally, he provides a few positions from the start, just a few moves to make sure that the keys are indeed correct for polyglot. But we'll be going into more detail with all that later on. For now, for this video, we need to get started with implementing a little bit of code at least. So I'll take that away for now. And the first thing you need to do is add some files to the source file, uh, source um, directory for vice. Add a polybook.c, a polykeys.c, and a polykeys.h. 
And polyglotkeys.h looks like so at the moment, just with the definition clause. And polykeys.c at the moment includes defs.h and polykeys. H. And what we're going to do inside this polykeys.c is we're simply going to brutally from the website is copy and paste in this array of keys. And we'll have to do a couple of little things to it once we've done that, but you'll see in a moment. So I'll just take in the whole array, hit copy and drop this in with paste. And you can see it's now arrived in my text editor. The next thing we're going to do is go back to the website and just at the top here, because the definitions, because they don't contain a ULL on the end of these 64-bit unsigned integers here. So inside polykeys.h, just going to paste in that macro from the website there that says we put a UI64 on the end um, if it's Microsoft compiler, otherwise a ULL. And the the problem we have here, though, you remember, is that we've already inside our defs.h defined a U64. So we're going to need to change this definition slightly here. So I'm going to put an underscore and poly on the end here. And I'm also going to put an underscore and a poly on the end here, like so. That means then, of course, that you'll need to select everything inside this array, inside the uh, text editor. And I'm just going to do a quick replace, replace the U64s with a poly, like so, in the selected text, so that everything works out fine there. And the last thing I want to do is I want to take this here. I'm going to change this un64 for a u64. I'm going to call this random64 a random poly, 64 poly. And I'm just going to take this definition and copy it and paste it into, well, I'm going to type extern and then paste and paste it so it's available in other files. So we've got our poly keys now in. Now inside polybook.c, we're going to also include devs.h but not polykeys.h, we'll be coding polybook.h. Uh, sorry, we won't be coding, no, we will be including, sorry, polykeys.h. So, and what we're going to do inside polybook.c is actually write all of our book code that we need all inside this file. Before we do that, make sure that inside the make file you've, you've added in the polybook.c and polykeys.c so that they get compiled with the program. So what we'll very, very quickly do here is just write a small function to end this video because it's gone on long enough already. And I'll call it polykey from board because we're going to need this anyway to get the polyglot key from the board. And all I'm going to do now, because I want this really as a placeholder here, I'm just going to return, and I can't remember the name already, the random 64 poly. I'm just going to return this and let's just return the key at 400 like so. And now I'm just going to go into defs.h and take this function definition and down the bottom of defs.h and make some room down here so I can scroll things up so you can see it a bit better. Oops, need another one of those. And it's polybook.c and just another extern again so we can use this function of the places we actually won't i don't think need to use this anywhere anywhere but uh, in the polybook.c file but i want to print one to the screen now when vice starts so i'll just take this function here and at the start of vice here let's just do a print f and have polykey just for my own peace of mind that things are working okay paste the function name in and we called it pause, didn't we? Okay, so I'll save all of that and just off screen where you can't see, I'm just going to make this and check that it makes. And it does indeed seem to make. So now that it's made, I'm just going to quickly run vice. And you can see that we've got a poly key now printed to the screen. Okay, it's not an hexadecimal format, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we know that it's compiled and our keys are in. Okay, good. So in the next video, then we'll actually start advancing things a little bit more and implementing some of the functions. We can actually start generating our hash key in the polyglot format from our board. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.